welcome to our service for the ninth Sunday after Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom, to whom all, all hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you with all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you collect for the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we have the first lesson. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the second book of Samuel, chapter 11, and reading verses 26 to chapter 12 and verse 13. When Bathsheba heard that her husband had been killed, she mourned for him. When the time of mourning was over, 
David sent for her to come to the palace. She became his wife and bore him a son. But the Lord was not pleased with what David had done. The Lord sent the prophet Nathan to David. Nathan went to him and said, There were two men who lived in the same town. One was rich and the other poor. The rich man had many cattle and sheep, while the poor man had only one lamb, which he had bought. He took care of it and grew, grew it up in his home with his children. He would feed it with some of his own food, let it drink from his cup and hold it in his lap. The lamb was like a daughter to him. One day a visitor arrived at the man's home. The rich man didn't want to kill one of his own animals to prepare a meal for him. Instead, he took the poor man's lamb and cooked a meal for his guest. David was very angry with the rich man and said, I swear by the living Lord that the man who did this ought to die. For having done such a cruel thing, he must pay back four times as much as he took. You are that man, Nathan said to David. And this is what the Lord God of Israel says. I made you king of Israel and rescued you from Saul. I gave you his kingdom and his wives. I made you king over Israel and Judah. If this had not been enough, I would have given you twice as much. Why then have you disobeyed my commands? Why did you do this evil thing? You had Uriah killed in battle. You let the Ammonites kill him. And then you took his wife. Now, in every generation, some of your descendants will die a violent death because you have disobeyed me and have taken Uriah's wife. I swear to you that I will cause someone from your own family to bring trouble on you. You will see it when I take your wives from you and give them to another man, and he will have intercourse with them in broad daylight. You sinned in secret, but I will make this happen in broad daylight for all Israel to see. I have sinned against the Lord, David said. Nathan replied, The Lord forgives you. You will not die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy upon me, O God, after thy great goodness. According to the multitude of thy mercies, do away mine offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and clear when thou art judged. Behold, I was shapen in wickedness, and in sin hath my mother conceived me. But lo, thou requirest truth in the inward parts, and shalt make me to understand wisdom secretly. Thou shalt purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Turn thy face from my sins, and put out all my misdeeds. You make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. O oh, give me the comfort of thy help again, and establish me with thy free spirit. Then shall I teach thy ways unto the wicked, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now the epistle. The reading is taken from Ephesians 4 beginning at the first verse. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean, but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure the f of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 6, beginning at the 24th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were at the place where Jesus had given the bread, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has to set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then? so that we may see it and believe in you. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Our sermon this morning bears on John 6, 24 to 35. And Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, we read this morning. The world is full of bread, and yet far too many live hungry, empty, and searching. People are really, really looking for food to eat. People are very hungry because of this epidemic. They can't even go to work. Parents sit down at home. Children are searching what to eat. Parents are looking to how to feed their families. Everybody's so hungry. People lo lose their jobs. Families are no more together. Father and mother are separated. So the children are really, really scattered and looking for food to eat. That says something about our appetite and the bread we have eaten. Even the footballer was even trying to arrange free school meal for schools, for parents to move on, with, to help them in their, in their, in their, with their children and families, bringing us together as one, as Jesus did in this chapter. Not all bread sustains and grows life. Not all bread is nourishes in our body. If you want to know the good value bread, you have to look beyond the bread. That's what Jesus is teaching us in today's gospel. The people have shown up hungry just yesterday. Jesus fed 5,000 of them with five loaves of bread and two fishes. Today they show up and their first question is, Rabbi, when do you come here? They did not marvel at yesterday's miracle, give thanks for God's generosity, or even wonder who this rabbi is. They are interested only in their own appetites, and Jesus knows it. They are not looking for him, they are looking for their own stomach. Jesus said, very, very, I tell you, you are not looking for me, not because you, sh you saw signs, but because you ate and you are filled with the loaves of bread and fish, he said, he, told, he said to them. The people are consigned for their bellies. Jesus is consigned for their lives. People nowadays don't even think about Christ anymore. They think about what they will eat, 
how they will achieve what they will eat. They don't think who blessed that food, who bring that food to them, who make it to be available. People want to feed themselves with bread. Jesus want to feed them with word of God. Do not work for the food that perishes, he tells them, but for the food that endures for eternal life. Food will just eat it and it go to the toilet and it shit it out. But the food of Christ will remain in you forever. It will be eternal life. Jesus ignores their question and rebuke them for their superficial interests. Most certainly, I tell you, you seek me, not because he saw signs, but because he ate of the loaves and we are feared. The crowd is focused at stomach level rather than spirit level. At the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus satisfied their physical hunger. And now they are looking for more of the same thing. They are not looking for spiritual level. They are looking for the physical, how to feed them, themselves. Manna every day from heaven comes down. People don't think about life. The food that endures is Jesus himself. He is the bread that is broken and distributed for the life of the world. He is the bread that is broken and yet never divided. He is the bread that is eaten and yet never exhausted. He is the bread that concentrates those who believe in and eat. He is the bread of life. He says, I'm the bread of life, Jesus tells the people. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Think of Christ. Think of his life. Think of your life. Go close to Christ. Things will be okay for you. You will never find. You will never look for anything. Nothing will be lacking from your life. Because you have Christ in you. He is offering the people himself. He is imperishable bread. That nourishes and sustains imperishable. The bread can never be perish. If you have Christ in your life, you eat the bread and you will be satisfied. God has employed signs of various kinds, symbols, miracles that point beyond themselves to some, something greater. The only bread of the Passover is a sign to remind Israel of salvation that God offered them in Egypt. Our father ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus therefore said to them, Most certainly I tell you, it wasn't Moses who gave you the bread out of heaven, but my father gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. The bread of God gives life. The manna sustains physical life, but the true bread of God gives eternal life. Are we ready to eat the manna from heaven? Or to eat the bread that will give us eternal life? Which bread are you looking for? Is it the real bread, or the physical bread, or the eternal bread? That will make you, you will never be thirsty in your life. You will be satisfied, you will be filled up with you and your family. If you eat the bread of life. Jesus says, whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So we are invited to come to him and put our trust in him. Put all your trust in Christ. Believe in him. He will give you that bread and that fish that will give you eternal life. That will be in your life forever. And that will make you to grow in spirit of Christ. The call of Jesus to us in this chapter is an evangelic call. Have you tasted all the bread of life? Or are you still working for the bread that perishes? Which bread are you looking for? Is it bread of life or the perishable one? For me, I'm looking for the bread of life that will never end. Internal bread. Do not be satisfied with more bread. Come to Jesus and receive the best and finest 100% whole wheat bread. The top of the line, the stuff that will keep you going forever. 
don't eat more bread. That one tomorrow we have muko on it. If you put it in your fridge or you put it anywhere, you see it in the morning, it will turn black. That is the mold one. But come to the Jesus and have the real finest, 100% finest bread that will sustain your life and keep you going. That bread will be in your life forever. You eat the bread and you will believe that, yes, Christ lives in you and Christ lives in us. The Ephesians 4, 1 to 16, we read, tell us about unity. How do we unite ourselves? How do we come close to Christ? With Christ, we have unity. With Christ, we have peace. And that peace is given us from the best of the finest bread is given us. He given us a, the most important forever, forever bread that we eat and will be satisfied. We will never be tasty. The primary core is unity. Every effort to maintain the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. They are to equip the saint for ministry. Until all of us come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. The peace of God will be among us in Jesus' name. Let us unite as one in Christ. Let us come together with one board. Let us come together as the children of Christ, children that Christ know, the disciples, the apostles of Christ, and unite ourselves. And eat that bread that is given our bread of life, not the mold bread. Let us come to Christ and know that his sin can give you that bread that will sustain you and your family and your children in your place of work, anywhere you go, you'll be satisfied that you have Christ in you. He will never fear anything. He said, fear not, I'm with you. Christ will make you will never have anything to doubt. He will have anywhere that anybody is asking you that this is happening and you say, no, I have Christ in me. Christ lives in you when you eat that eternal bread. The bread that sustains your life. The bread will never make you to be thirsty again. The bread that will keep you living. Keep you strong, give you courage, give you satisfaction in your life. Make you to be bold to speak with the word of God. Make you to be bold to stand as children of God. Make you to be bold to know that you are a child of Christ and Christ lives in you. Amen. Thanks for listening.
her words reflect the thoughts, hopes and needs of those gathered here today in your name. Amen. Lord, we ask that you continue to guide and help the leaders of the Anglican churches in the country and all over the world, and of course especially the Archbishop of Canterbury. And Lord, as you guide them, we ask that you will give them compassion and wisdom to rule in their churches. We pray, Lord, also for our new Bishop of Chelmsford, wherever she may be coming into office. But more especially, Lord, we pray for our very own Reverend Kate Lovesy and those who help her in her undertaking of spreading the good news of you and the work that you have done over the thousands of years for the Christian church. We pray especially for our church wardens, Bob and Heath, and we ask that you be with them, Lord, all the time. And we acknowledge the great help that Bob and Janet have been to the church recently in their undertaking to gather funds for St. John's. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially, we thank you, Lord, also for the members of the PCC and those on the committees that are organising funds to bring money into the church. We also, Lord, like you, thank you uh, for Kate and her team were making the Zoom programs that go out to all those unable to attend church at the moment due to either the COVID-19 situation or their frailty and inability to get to the proper services. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for all those local churches spreading the word of Jesus to all those in the Red Bridge area and further afield. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also, Lord, like you, thank you for the church to enable us to keep a foothold in seven kings and to spread the word and good news of Jesus Christ to the locals. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen and Sovereign, and we ask that her and her family are kept happy, healthy and safe. We pray that they can come together in their hearts and souls and organise the problems that they are undertaking as a family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in the world that are suffering from the COVID virus. And we ask, Lord, that you assist where you can with the support and immunization against this horrid virus. We pray for all those suffering from cancer, from heart conditions, and all those 
illnesses that have been untreated or missed due to the community being so involved in the COVID-19 crisis. Lord, we thank you for providing us with the impurization of the COVID-19 virus and ask that you will continue to protect us and our friends and families um, through attacking the virus's mutations whenever they arise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are homeless and ask that you help financially to provide them with food and shelter during this epidemic. We pray, Lord, for those who are homeless or refugees seeking safety in another country, for those who are victims of war, terrorism, or who are oppressed and unable to practice their own faiths in safety. We pray that you will bring relief to all those suffering from famine and drought in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those working in the Redbridge area for our community, keeping it going, and for those who we have taken for granted whilst the running of the services keep going. We pray for those in the emergency services, the ambulance brigade, the fire brigade, and the police service. For the nurses and doctors and staff of the NHS that have taken their work so seriously to the jeopardy of their own safety. Lord, we ask that you will keep them all happy, healthy and safe, especially when dealing with people with the COVID virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for providing us with the tools to fight the virus uh, that has been discovered by the scientists and doctors. Lord, we thank you for taking our brothers and sisters who have been ill and passed away to the, your side because as you said within your promise to us that those believing shall never die but will have eternal life. For those left behind, Lord, we ask that you will bring them comfort and succour and support their loss. Lord, bring them the good memories of the parted friends and relatives so that they may reflect on the happiness they were in life and the happiness and helpfulness they gave to those around them and that you will ever be with them and with us. Lord, guide us and keep us always in your word and bring us always to the, uh, your side so that we may deeply love thee and understand thee in everything we do until that great time when we depart into heaven to enjoy your company and those of loved ones already departed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful Father, 
accept these our prayers in the name of the Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his commands send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us into your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, many we are one body, because, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. 
Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Please do receive communion wherever you are. Let all the world in every corner sing, my God and King. The heavens are not too high, his praise may thither fly, the earth is not too low, his praises there may grow. Let all the world in every corner sing, My God and King. Let all the world in every corner sing, My God and King. The church with psalms must shout, no door can keep them out, but above all the heart must bear the longest part. Let all the world in every corner sing, my God and King. Let us pray. Holy Father, who didst gather us around the table of thy Son, that we, with all thy whole household, might partake of this holy food, in a new world wherein the fullness of thy peace is revealed, gather people of every race and tongue to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.